Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at how we can render videos out of the sports sample from Unreal Engine. And this will be so that we can use these graphics in either a video editor or maybe a playback deck like a HyperDeck. I am going to be using uh, DaVinci Resolve and so in this case I want to render this replay wipe that looks like this. And I'm going to use that as a bit of an overlay to um, cover up this cut between a uh, high shot and then a close-up of this ball getting kicked. So I need to render this uh, sequence. Now just to let you know how I got here, I'm in the content browser and content scenes for the uh, sports graphics demo and this uh, wipe relay level is the one that I've opened up. And in its sequencer, if we play, it looks like this. And to render, we can just click this movie clapboard right here to go into the movie render queue. So I'll click on that. And this adds the level to the render queue. And we need to adjust the settings so that we get a render that we want. So I'm going to click on the unsaved configuration. Now by default, this is rendering into project directory, saved uh, movie renders. And there's a sequence name and a frame number. And the output resolution is HD 1920 by 1080. So just to be clear in Unreal Engine, the camera does define the aspect ratio. So in our case, we're using 16 by 9 cine cameras. Uh, but the output resolution is defined by the render settings themselves. Now these settings can be saved as presets and the project comes with a preset. So if I click on unsaved config and get this drop down, you can see this 4K MOV alpha. This is provided as part of the project and has a lot of the render settings set up, optimized for rendering graphics. So I'm gonna select that preset and I'll say yes to replacing all of the settings we have. And let's take a look at the settings that are in this preset. First, we have Apple ProRes, and this render is ProRes 444, so that means we'll get an alpha channel. Uh, in fact, in deferred rendering, we activated the accumulator includes alpha, so this way we know that we're not only saving space for an alpha channel in the file, but we're actually leveraging that by including an alpha channel when we render. Uh, there's some anti-aliasing settings here, temporal sample count of 8, a spatial sample count of 1. That makes sure we get some nice smooth graphics. And then some game overrides to further optimize the render itself. Now importantly, we may want to adjust some of the values here in output. One of the things you can see is the output resolution is Ultra HD 3840 by 2160. I'm going to keep that, but the output directory is an F drive and path that is not on my computer. This must be left over from uh, one of the developers. Maybe it's the path on their computer, but I don't want to use that. In fact, I want to save my renders out into a directory in my project folder. So down here at the bottom of the render queue, uh, set up here, I can scroll down and I can see all these different names of tokens that I can use in my directories and file names so that they can be replaced by values relative to the actual render itself. And if I scroll down enough here, I can see project underscore dir, that's going to be the actual project directory for this. So what I'll do is click here in the output directory, delete that, and then I'll do a squiggle bracket and project Let's spell that correctly, underscore D-I-R, and close the bracket. And so it will be saved in the project directory. And then I'm going to put it in saved and slash sports renders. Okay, so project directory saved sports renders. That's where my rendered files will go. And then I also want to adjust this file name format. It currently says sequence name and version. And the sequence name is just sequence, not particularly descriptive. So what I actually want to use is the level name, the wipe replay. So I'm going to change the word sequence to level. And now when we uh, render this, we'll get the level name. And I think I can scroll up here. Yeah, level name right here. So the file will be named uh, wipe replay underscore version. And the first one will be version one and then Subsequent renders will increase the version number. So that is the setup here, and I'm gonna be using this again in the future. So I wanna save this setup as my own preset. So I'll click this drop down again, and I'm gonna save as preset. I'll save it in the same folder. This happens to be saved in the render presets folder. And I'm just gonna call this uh, pixel prof uh, preset. 
All right, there we go. So save that. And this is the pixel prof preset and I can accept that. And finally, we can go ahead and render local. So this will render right here on this machine. All right, that was quick enough. And now I can go back over to DaVinci Resolve. I'll right click in my media bin here and import media. And now to find that uh, video, I'll just go to where I have that. So it's my F drive, Unreal Projects, Sports Design, saved. And in here I should have sports renders. There it is. Double click and there it is. White replay version one. So I'll select that and open it up. And here it is in my media bin. So I can just drag this out into my timeline. I'll just cover up our transition right here. And let's see how that looks. Perfect. So that's a single level render. But what if we want to render from rundown where we have lots of different setups for a single level? Let's take a look at that. So I'll close my render queue for now. I'll go into content browser and then content. And in rundowns, I'll open up the full screens rundown right here. Rundown full screens, double click. And here we've got lots of uh, renders that we can use. And one of the things that I can look at here, for example, is I think there's like a team versus team somewhere in here. Here it is, team versus team. All right, so with this page, I can do a preview of that. There we go, we've got two teams on either. Oh, interesting, the names are uh, reversed. So let's just uh, take care of that. So uh, D, 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 D. yeah, I'm just gonna take this field nine and copy that. Uh, actually, I'm gonna copy the daring hairs and type in mock 10 and then I'll paste the daring hairs there and enter. There we go. Now we got that correct. All right, so that looks good. Good thing we did the preview. Let's preview next. That looks correct and preview next. All right, so these are the three pages that I'd like to render. Now, before I go ahead and render these, I want to make sure that they will render using the same preset that I had set up before. So to do that, I need to go into my editor preferences and assign that preset as being the default rendering for rundown. So I'll go to the edit menu and choose editor preferences. And then here in editor preferences, I need to scroll down and under motion design, we have the movie render queue. And this is where we want to define our preset. It looks like I've done that earlier, so I can just select it here. So whatever preset I select here is what will be used for rundown renders. So with this in place, I can close this and uh, that'll be used. Now, the only other thing to know is that what will be rendered is all the sequences that are embedded in a given level. So this has two sequences in it. There is the out sequence, right? So if I preview out, it goes out. And there's the in sequence if I preview in. Now these levels are defined in such a way that they could be used for live broadcast. So the in animation only goes until the animation is finished and then it stops. And procedural animation takes over for these backgrounds. So there's no sequence running right now. And if I'm going to render this for use in a video editor or playback deck, I probably want some more length to this. So I could either add a sequence that's just uh, static. And I think that's probably the way to go here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, open up the level. So I can right click on the page and I should be able to edit the scene. And there we go, that's opened up. Let's uh, just move the rundown aside. So we have, if I expand this, we have an in and an out. So if I play my in, that's where things are. And if I select out and I play that, that plays those out. So what I want to do is take this animation, uh, or I want to take this position and have like a hold animation that stays put. And that way I'm not going to edit the in or the out so that those will still work for a live broadcast, but I want a third animation that is just hold on screen or something like that. So I think what I'll do for this is, I'm just looking at how complicated is this going to be? There's quite a few 
things set up here. Um, I think I'm going to take the out animation and try to delete any animations after the opening frame so that everything just stays put. So let's give that a try. So I'm going to click on motion design. I'll right click on out and I'll duplicate that. And with my duplicate out, I'm going to do a couple things with this. One, I'm going to rename it. So with it selected, I'll F2 and I'll just call this hold. And then next, I'm going to go into settings and I want to remove this tag that says out because this tag is used by the transition logic to know what sequence to play when it wants to take a level out. So I am going to set this to none so that there isn't a tag in this place. And so that way transition logic won't accidentally pick up my new sequence as an out sequence. So tree, I've got this on hold. Tags are none. All right, so now the hold animation just needs to be changed so that we don't have any keyframes after frame zero. So let's expand anything that has something evident as a keyframe. Let's extend here. So we will delete these keyframes right here. And that's all we have there. And let's take a look at this one. Same thing. And this should be okay, I guess. Let's see what's on here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's just a single keyframe there, so that's fine. Here's some more blocks. Also looks like individual keyframes because I want this to last for a long time, right? So um, we're at 60 frames a second. So 180 frames is only three seconds. Let's set this up for 300 frames. That's at least uh, five seconds of displaying the graphic. So we'll go with that and uh, continue scrolling down and removing any animation keyframes. All right, so I think we, I, we seem to have it gone. Um, so if we play this, uh, we still have some animation happening here. So let's see if we can find out where that is. Is it the camera that's animating? No, I don't see any animations there. There's a transform here. Let's see what's going on there. Oh, sure enough, there's, there's our animation. So let me select that and delete that. And now we should be great. Okay, so this is going to hold in place for five seconds. And so when this third sequence gets rendered, we can use that after a take in animation to uh, kind of loop through this. All right. And, uh, you know, we'd probably want to set this to a length that we would uh, know that is looping for these uh, little backgrounds. But for now, this will be fine. OK, so Control Shift S to save everything and go back to my rundown. And so now I'm going to render these three levels. So I'm going to select these three levels. And again, when rundown renders, it's going to render all the sequences on each of these levels. So I will end up with three different renders per level for a total of nine videos. And again, uh, we're using the PixelProf preset. So these will be named FS team versus team version one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'll just go ahead and hit render and let's uh, watch all of that happen. Okay, we've got a bunch of warnings, but our renders are done, so we should actually be in good shape. I'm going to go back over to DaVinci Resolve, and I'll right-click and import some media. And sure enough, we have all of our renders here. I should have, all right, replay 01, and then I also have uh, team versus team. Interesting, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that version even though the name is FS team, it's different. It's still picked up from number one. So let's just try this first set of three, two, three, four. I'm going to select these and drag them into, uh, sorry, I'm just going to open them. So they're into my uh, media bin and then drag them out to here. And now we should have this. The only thing is that this is our in and this is our out. So I'm just going to slide this. Here. Oops, Control Z, undo. Let's make sure that we only have these two clips selected. Put that at the end. 
And finally, we will put these together. And that should give us an overlay. Let's see how it goes. All right, so we do get a little bit of a pop here. And so to solve that, I could just shorten each of these. So I'll go right here, zoom in on our timeline, and I'm just going to take each of these and trim this down a little bit and then trim this down a little bit and finish by putting in a little cross dissolve right there and try and cover up our little render glitch. And there we go. So that gives us that overlay and then we can do our replay and we're all set. So that's how you can render out of the engine. Um, I guess, you know, instead of adding a third uh, render, if I wanted the transition to be more consistent with the, uh, you know, take in and then the hold, I could edit the take in sequence instead and just extend its duration so that after the logos were in, that that would, uh, work as well. So I could probably take the in animation, duplicate that, call it uh, render hold or something like that in and hold and uh, extend its duration just so that after all of the graphics landed into place, the animation would just continue smoothly and then um, still render my out animation. So there's a couple different options there, but hopefully you get a sense of the process of rendering and understand that you can have a single level render many different sequences for use in your video editing, or you can load these videos onto a playback deck like a hyperdeck and uh, play them back as needed uh, when you're queuing them up from something like ATEM software or using Stream Deck or whatever else you're using to automate your broadcast. So I hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.